Hi everybody, this is Phil Kerner with Tool and Die Guy, and in today's video I want to talk a little bit about the consumer products you might see on the shelf when you walk into a big box store like Walmart. And this video is going to start with a story. Uh, my story is I went out to put some uh, food in my bird feeder the other day and I said, you know what, this would make a good video because I actually built the molds for this bird feeder and it was for a company named Pet Zone back in 2001. And as you can see, as you look at the pictures of this bird feeder, it's quite detailed with the slats for the sides for the, uh, uh, the siding and the detail around the windows. And if you notice, the bird seed isn't falling out of the windows because there's little plexiglass windows in there. Uh, you've got the roof, you've got the base. And if you look closely at this one, this is actually one of the first production samples. It's got the engineer's initials on it, RLQ, that's Bob Quinlan, Robert Quinlan. Uh, from Pet Zone, and he was a great guy, and uh, we worked well together on this project. But the good news is, I built a few of these bird feeders, and this is one that's never been outside. Uh, I built everything for this one, and it's got the windows, it's got the side panels, it's got two roofs and a base. And tonight, I just want to show you uh, the prints, the drawings, for just what it took to make these uh, light colored walls. And Again, the average consumer sees this on the shelf at Walmart, and you know it's $9.95 or $19.95. They decide if it's a good deal or not, not knowing the work and the thousands of dollars that went into building these injection molds. And these companies build stuff like this based on consumer feedback, and they better hope it's a winner because if not, in the end, they probably invested probably $75 to $80,000 on this tooling, and if they don't sell, they don't make any money back. So this would be a great video uh, to share with people who have always wondered what uh, plastic parts, where they come from, injection molds. It will be fun for me to go back to my mold making uh, trade and show you guys how we did this stuff. It would also be a really good video for a kid that might be thinking about uh, getting into the design field, the plastic injection molds, uh, mold making. Uh, this kind of shows you what a, a mold maker goes through to produce what most people would think as a throwaway bird feeder uh, at Walmart. So I hope you enjoy this and uh, let's get started. So as we begin to unpack the set of drawings for just the four walls of the bird feeder and believe me uh, there was a separate mold for these four walls and a separate mold for these four walls. This is what we would call um, an overview drawing, or uh, I wouldn't call it an assembly drawing yet, but one of the beauties of uh, 3D CAD worker uh, now is that the designer can give you a 3D split of the mold. That's what I want this to look like when I'm done. So I'm kind of beginning with the end in mind, and uh, this would be the front half of the mold. This is the back half of the mold. There's a reason for that, but as a tool maker, I know that. You don't need to know that right now. But look at the details, all the details that need to be machined into the steel just to make this simple throwaway bird feeder. That is drawing one. The second drawing I see as a tool maker to build this project is, is an assembly drawing showing the mold put together with a section view in between. And what this drawing is showing me is a bill of materials on the right hand side matched with accordingly numbered balloons pointing out the different features of the mold. Very few dimensions basically just giving me the stack height when I'm finished about what height and thickness this mold should be. But for now, I'm just uh, as I'm beginning to look at this project, I'm just going to see what the materials are and take this in. Again, with the average person that doesn't know, uh, what goes into just building a simple bird feeder. In this particular drawing, the third one we're looking at, this is what we call a plan view. And again, it's just giving me some overall dimensions of the width and uh, the, the height and the width of the mold this way. And um, an overview as a tool maker, just to look at again the details. This is the front half of the mold, which is the cavity side of the mold. This is where the plastic will be injected into the mold. Again, the level of detail. As a tool maker, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing all these lines that all needs to be machined into steel to produce the bird feeder. 
This particular drawing is a plan view of the back half of the mold or the ejector side or sometimes called the B side of the mold. And again now we see all the machining that will be done again with very few dimensions. Uh, this is just an overview again of the landscape of the injection mold that I as a tool maker I'm going to uh, get a, an idea of the size and scope of the project with some reference dimensions again for the X and Y height and length of the uh, mold overall but again uh, a few more uh, balloons called out again a plan view an overall view of the project. We haven't even begun machining it. This is to give me an idea of the scope of what I'm going to be working on. This drawing is the B plate and what we're looking at here is now we're getting into some dimensions to machine the B plate where the actual core blocks will be inserted into this plate with this pocket. Two different size pockets. We're seeing a lot of uh, holes for water lines in the side. A lot of different dimensions here. This is what the machinist or the tool maker, depending on who's going to build this particular plate, this is the detail he will work from or she will work from to uh, build. I'm sorry, this is the A plate uh, with the sprue bushing here. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to make sure I get this in here. The drawing is so big, my camera can't even expand to catch it all. Let's see here. There we go. So we've got a sprue bushing down here. This is where the plastic comes in. But these are the machining details just for one half of the mold. So a lot of work there. Again, uh, this is the first drawing we've seen with actual machining dimensions on it. This particular drawing is for the B plate. And this is the back half of the mold. And again, just to show you the detail of what's going on here. Again, the drawing is so large, I can't get everything in. Uh, on this particular camera shot, but again these are all the machining dimensions to finish off this part of the mold. And again, the two big pockets for the inserts to go into, the cavities are on this side of the cores, and uh, water lines, and if you look at a 3D view down here, that's a piece of Swiss cheese. There's a lot of machining that goes into that particular plate. In this drawing we're seeing a detailed machine uh, uh, machining plate uh, drawing. This is the dimensions to actually machine this ejector retainer plate and this is the uh, part of the mold that retains all the ejector pins that will push the part off of the mold once the part has been injected and cured and cooled and is ready to come out of the mold. Very, uh, again you'll see all the different colors uh, because there are so many different sizes I always encourage my tool makers and machinists and I did so myself was to uh, color code the holes so you kind of knew um, this group of green is one size, this light orange is another size, yellow another, um, the pink another size. It's a good way because as tool makers, we don't build a hundred of these. We get one, ch we get one chance, one thing, uh, one time to build this plate. So we don't want to screw it up. That happens, but try not to. And color coding your drawings makes a difference. Again, uh, an integral part of an injection mold. This particular drawing is for the ejector plate. The ejector plate uh, backs up the ejector retainer plate. And uh, this is again two plates that will push forward to inject the parts out of the mold once the parts are cured. Fairly simple plate. Most of these are clearance holes. But uh, again, these are all the dimensions again just for a simple plate as part of this project. This particular drawing uh, is a very uh, simple part of the mold, one of the easier things to build. These are the rails that go under the B plate and um, in between these two rails go the ejector plates. So this gives them room to travel up and down again to eject the part. Uh, usually these are ground to a specific height uh, as close as we can get to that. But there's some other figuring we'll have to do to, to assemble the mold because Sometimes if you buy four inch diameter or thick material, it's not always four inches when you get it and it comes out a little undersized and it's a simple adjustment to make. But again, simple part of the mold, but needs to be built. Now we get into the meat and potatoes. This is the actual um, cavity blocks we're getting into. And look at the details on this. All of these details and all of these dimensions and all of these um, tolerances to hold. 
this is the actual block and a series of these blocks that will be machined that will eventually produce uh, let's see, it looks like this side of the uh, part. And look at all the detail, all the slats and everything in there. And for you tool makers out there, you'll notice, yes, I've got a lot of dimensions here for uh, shutoffs and overall thicknesses, widths, and lengths, but there's nothing for all these slats. That's because I traced all those out on a decal from models that were provided by the client. And for those of you guys who wondered what a decal can do, that's some detail pretty good detail to trace out and uh, boy we could do some wonderful work on those machines but that's uh, how many of these were there does it even say on here there is uh, this is lower two we'll go through it but that's just one of the cavity blocks here's another cavity block and if you look it's producing this side of the mold right here and again all of my shut off dimensions on the sides and uh, 3d view of it over here but again all of that to produce a bird feeder and we're not done yet another cavity block and uh, same deal uh, but you can see the detail that had to be uh, finished off in this particular block finally let's see is this the last cavity block no nope, there was four of them so this is the third one and again the same thing let's see what we're looking at here Oh, it says it should be upper three. So this mold did produce the walls. Sorry about that. For the upper half of the bird feeder also. And this is this is this view right here. That's the cavity side that produced this side of the wall. Finally, our last cavity block that is producing this side of the mold with the hexagon shaped um, fake window at the top. Again, there's all the details to produce that particular piece of material. Finally, this fairly large drawing here, can I zoom out a little bit? A little bit. Um, this is the back half of the mold and because the back halves were almost similar to each other, they didn't have four separate inserts, it was one big insert. What you don't see here is the, that is the inside of these four walls that you can't see from the outside. But that's all the work that goes into it, the other side. And look at the details and the machining and these tiny ribs and the EDM work, uh, electrical discharge work that's done here in this section view here. And a lot of work on that particular block. Um, don't know what else to add to that without teaching a mold making class. But again, you can see the hours and hours and hours of labor that goes into it. And a few leftover notes. Uh, let's see here. This is the uh, bill of materials. And this, you can see we made some changes here. Some things are crossed out very neatly, I must add. But if they were green, highlighting green, it means I ordered the material and it's already here. Uh, some of the stuff was store bought. Uh, some omissions we made here. But this is. Uh, Another thing the toolmaker has to be able to look through and see is the material here, what size did it come in at, what do I have to do next, and uh, a few little odds and ends to throw in here for you. Uh, little toolmaker notes along the way, sketches people made that are all in the same folder. Just hand sketches, notes, we always kept all it together in case anything came back. And uh, we had these, that's a lot of information there. <laughs> but I just always would throw them in the package when they were finished. And just of some interest, occasionally a toolmaker does request some extra information or a, what we call a blow up of an area. And look at all the dimensions here, the, the, the angle dimensions, the tolerances and the notes from the engineer. But just to get one small area of this project done, this is a big blow up. Uh, so the toolmaker has a much better idea of the detail and can see it uh, expanded several times to have an idea of uh, how to machine it. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I tried to keep that as uncomplicated as possible, but that's what goes into just a simple bird feeder. And we didn't even talk about the two roofs or the base or the windows yet. I want to say, I think I mentioned this earlier, uh, this entire project you know, it was probably worth in excess of $100,000 back in 2000. And uh, you could probably get this done in China now for, you know, 
fifteen or twenty thousand dollars and it wasn't because we were greedy I paid my guys well and uh, we did the best we could there was probably just in this uh, these walls uh, six to eight hundred hours of labor and uh, machining the, and um, polishing and assembly then you've got the design and the material so a little educational piece for you next time you see a bird feeder or a simple product on the shelves at the big box store like Walmart a lot goes into this a lot more than you ever know so I'm Phil Kern the tool and die guy hope you found this a little bit informative and uh, we'll see you on the next video